if you're tired of your beats sounding depressing, if you're tired of your beats sounding cheesy, then this is the video you need. So you can make beats that sound happier without sounding like they were made for a toddler's TV show. But before we get the money, then the power so we can get the women, I've got a question for you. That question is, how do you find the relative minor or major key fast comment your answer down below if you don't know don't worry because i'll be revealing the answer later on in the video just stay tuned now let's get into it this is well you know what this is right we are in fl studio and i'm going to show you how this is done first thing you need to do is to use the one and the third chords in your chord progression by the way this is based on a minor scale these chords for example in a minor are the A chord and the C chord. Let's quickly go to scale highlighting. A minor, that's all the white notes. These are the chords. A, C, A, C. Sad, happy, sad, happy. These are chords where the root note is the first note in the scale and the third note in the scale, respectively. This is also the root of the scale and the relative major. Here are two examples of chord progressions that use this, okay? So let me just play this on the piano. I'm terrible at playing stuff on the piano, so bear with me, but it'll be easier. We'll start with the A, which is the root note. And then we'll go to the three. And that's the D. So let's, I'm just gonna play around and see what comes up. I'm not even gonna really structure it on purpose. Let's add a metronome, let's do it. Mm. Messed up a little bit at the end, <laughs> but we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. So this is what we got. Let me fix this up and I'll get back. Now this is the root, so these are A, C, then we got F chord, F, and then we got E. So this is one, three, we could actually move this down. One, three, five, four. see how that sounds yeah it doesn't sound too happy nor does it sound too sad yeah perfect 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 let me give you another example actually this is d my bad so this is one three four five i don't know why i always accidentally think that f is five it's actually six so let's play this back because it's on record, it's not gonna loop. But you see how that sounds, yeah? Now let's do one more. Just remember, have the one and the three in there. They don't need to be right next to each other. Let's try something different. Had a bit of trouble transitioning from certain chords because I don't really use that a lot. Here are the chords. Let's play them back without the bass notes real quick. Okay, I need to fix that up. All of these are actually way too high velocity to be fair. Let's bring that down. And this is A and we got E. Then we go F, then we have C. So this is one, five, six, three. And again, this is what it sounds like. And usually I'd have everything an octave lower, so let's play it over here. But for some reason, my hand just always, it always, always consistently 
goes to this six octave. I think it's just because that's where the middle is in this keyboard. But let's play this back. See how easy that is. One and three, gentlemen. That is the key. If you wanna learn more about making your own beats from scratch using my easy nine step trap beat making formula, go to jcarterray.com forward slash free trap course or click on the link in the description. That free course will take you from creating your melody all the way to mastering your beat. And it's completely free. You've got nothing to lose except for the opportunity to join this course because it won't be available forever and it won't be free forever. So join now. Let's get back to the video. Step number two, once you have the chord progression as a bass, as a skeleton for your track, the melody on top becomes much easier to create. I generally do this based on feel and by air, but a tip to avoid your melody sounding too sad is to avoid the second note in the scale. With A, the second note in the scale would be B. So this is A, this is B. But a mix of sad and happy notes creates a good medium that will have your melody sounding mostly happy, positive, and uplifting without sounding cheesy. Here's two examples of a melody over this chord progression. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen to this a few times and then see what we come up with. So we've got something really, really simple. We're gonna go. We're gonna go D or E. And then basically copy this across. So very, very simple stuff. Let's play this back. Okay, I'd actually go. That's what I want. There we go. And then you could have you could have a C here. Because this leads right back to the C very, very nicely. And if you look at these notes, you'll see this kind of skips a note and becomes the C chord. If we bring that back to that C, it's like just skipping a note to the C chord. And then this kind of skips a note to go to the E, and then it's a note next to each other, and this is a note next to each other, and then this is a note next to each other. And generally when you have notes next to each other, they sound a little bit sadder. But it depends how you use them in it. So let's do one more melody.
and then we'll copy the first part of this and then we'll change up the end so it'll be like So let's listen back to this. And then we can go to that A. Let's listen. And we didn't use the B at all. But what I'm doing here is really based on feel. I'm not using any real theory to find the starting note or anything like that. It's just kind of playing around, listening to the chords and then hitting a note and seeing whether it fits with the chord progression. Generally, you don't want to go too high. See that it... That A just hits a little too high for me, personally. So I wouldn't go, that's basically two octaves up from your root note. You really don't wanna go that high. So the G's basically the highest that I'd go to. But generally I stay quite close. I might be like around the D. I usually start around the C, D, E when I'm making a melody in A minor. But you could start with A. So generally, I'd go from the A to the G. Okay, so one octave above your root note to just below the second octave, that would be my range of creating my melody. Generally, this is where I'm going. I wouldn't go to this G or just this F because it just sounds trash, yeah? <laughs> I just tested it out, it sounds trash. So that would be my range. That's my advice to you. And this should help you systemize it a little bit more instead of just relying on feel. Does that help? Let me know in the comment section down below. This is from the future, but this is something you really, really need to know. Now I changed this melody. Let me quickly play it back for you. And now I'm gonna tell you why and how you should start your melodies a foolproof way. So that's the change. I basically moved the G from G to E, and then I've moved everything down accordingly so it works with what we've got here. Now, the reason why I did this was to just check it out because the, the G was sounding a bit off to me. Uh, I was about to close this project down because I would have no need for it, but I was just being curious. And I realized that I usually start my melodies on the E. And if you check out these chords, they usually have an E. E is the perfect note to start your melody on that will always sound great, okay? So this is, let's quickly check, A, B, C, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth note of the scale. Use E and you're gonna get great results every time. Well, if you're using A minor, use the fifth note of the scale on whatever scale you're using. And I believe that is generally going to be a note that is going to sound beautiful in any scale. Let's quickly change this to a different scale. Let's go down. That E, trust me, trust me. So the limit that we're gonna place on our melody will be from A, so one octave up. You have wherever your root note is, one octave up, that's where you start. And then we'll go to E to start the melody. And the max, you can still go to G as your max, 
but usually you want to start on E and usually I won't really go that far away from it. You can go to G if you really want to and you need to, but generally you're going to stay maybe one to two spaces away from this E and maybe come back down over here. Okay. I usually don't use G as far as I remember, but E beautiful, always going to work out. Just needed to let you know fifth note in the scale, start your melodies with that you're generally going to have a great time. Let's not say you have to, there's no rules in this, but if you do, you're gonna have a great time. Let me just quickly experiment with this to see if I'm talking bullshit, okay? So if you go. Trust me that that E. Generally you're gonna have a great time. You can start with D and stuff and, and, and C and you can start with other notes as well. But that E, you're never gonna go wrong with that E. That E sounds perfect in the scale wherever you put it. So find a way to, to get that E in there and you're gonna have a good time, okay? The fifth note of the scale, you find a way to get that in there, you're gonna have good time. So build your melody around the fifth note in the scale, whether you're going up to it, whether it's like part of your melody, whether it's the start of your melody, and you should have good vibes. Just another tip I thought I'd add in here, although it's gonna make this editing process a whole lot longer, I felt you deserved it. Earlier on in this video, I did ask you a question and I told you I'd reveal the answer later on in the video. And I'm a man of my word, so let's do that right now. That question was, how do you find the relative minor or major key fast? The answer is to use the circle of fifths. Now let's quickly go to Google, type in circle of fifths. This is the circle of fifths, let's go to images and I'll quickly briefly teach you how to use it. Although I do have a more in-depth video on the channel that walks you through how to use the circle of fifths and walks you through the basics of music theory, go and check that out. But here we have A minor and the relative major, as I already showed you in this video, is C. This is how you use the circle of fifths, yeah? On the outside of the circle of fifths has all the major keys and on the inside has all the relative minor keys. So this is the minor key, this is the relative major. This is the major key, this is the relative minor. E minor, relative major is, leave a comment down below. You should be able to easily tell right about now. If you don't know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with you, mate. I don't know what to do. Also, the relative minor is the sixth note in the major scale. So, for example, if we come back to FL Studio, and pretend this is C major. Basically, if we start on the C and follow all the white notes, this is C major. C, D, E, F, G. Oh, let me do this properly. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. That is C major, okay? So the sixth note, C, D, E, F, G, A, is the relative minor, as you just saw. And in A minor, which would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G and then back to A. The third note in that, A, B, C, is the relative the relative major, C major. But using the circle of fifths just makes this so much easier so you don't have to do all that counting and all this moving along the scale. Just, you know, look at this, it tells you straight up. Like, who wants to do all that counting? Not me. If you wanna create melodies fast and easily and have a bunch of chord progressions at your disposal, I suggest you grab my Trap Melody MIDI Cheat Pack. Link down below, go to jcarteray.com forward slash MIDI Packs or check out my other MIDI Packs if there are any available at the time you're watching this. That comes with a bunch of MIDIs with a bunch of chord progressions, a bunch of melodies that you can just go in and kind of tweak instead of coming up with stuff from scratch because that is really the hardest part about creating melodies 
and chord progressions coming up with stuff from scratch it's much easier where you have something there already so go check that out link down below and i already told you the link if you've got any questions or any other tutorials you want me to make let me know in the comment section down below check out that video next and i'll see you in the next one peace out